Hey, so I'm currently in the desert, somewhere in the north of Chile in South America. And this place is huge, like really huge. And these deserts contain a huge amount of minerals. Like the surface I'm standing on right now is salt. And sometimes this is just a thin layer and sometimes meters thick like here. And the waters around here are pretty good for floating because they contain more salt than the Dead Sea. That is salty, all right. Now salt is just one of the many minerals that can be harvested here. Another crucial one is lithium, used for batteries. Hence the name lithium batteries. And a lot of the lithium that is available on this planet is laying in this desert. And let me show you how big that is. So here we have it, the white gold mountains of lithium. And it's not just used for electric cars, but also electronics like cameras, drones, laptops. They all contain this lithium. So as you can imagine, there's a huge worldwide growing need for this stuff. Because basically our civilization is running on this. And this place is home of the biggest lithium producer of the world. Wait, so let me try to show you how massive this is. And it roughly works like this. These trucks mine the material and raw minerals are put in these big water baths and slowly dissolve. The water evaporates and the minerals stay in, which is this white powder that contains high amounts of lithium. And that's the main reason this mine is here in the middle of the desert. A lot of sun, almost no rain, so the water evaporates quicker, which makes the process faster. And this is an impressive operation. But there are a few things tricky about mining all this lithium. One, lithium is a finite resource. There's only a limited amount available on Earth. It's not like snow, which just falls out of the sky every now and then. No, the amount of lithium on the planet right now is all we're going to get. 2. The production of lithium is growing rapidly. However, we haven't got a proper way to recycle it in the same scale as we produce it. So most of the batteries end up in the wrong place, like these landfills. But lithium is often found in very dry environments, like here, where water is a scarce resource. However, to mine lithium, a lot of water is needed. So they install these big water pipes, like here and here, to get water into their facility. However, by doing so, they extract the water from the entire environment, which makes it very difficult for local people to get their hands on water, or even farm vegetables. And four, besides that they extract all the water, all the minerals they need to mine and produce these batteries contaminates the water, so people can't use it anymore. Which means everyone around in this area is forced to buy water, drinking out of these shitty, stupid plastic bottles. Lithium inside the battery is one of the many components needed to run an electric car. There are a few other things you need. For instance, there's the energy to power up the battery. Ultimately, this will all be harvested from the sun in these solar farms. Or using windmills, lots of windmills. Although the energy it generates is clean, it still takes quite an amount of other energy and material to manufacture these things. Often hard to recycle and only last a certain time. And then there is... The car itself, the metal work and all the parts inside. Now this is made from metal, again, not a renewable resource. However, to be fair, most of the metal around gets recycled, so that's pretty good. However, to manufacture all the metal still requires huge amount of energy because you need to get high temperatures. 
And often this energy doesn't come from renewables, but from coal and oil. And then we have the interior of the car, the dashboard. It's made from plastic, which is made from oil. Again, a finite resource that comes with its own problems. And then there's the rubber of the tires, which is made from oil. And these things are very difficult to recycle. And one thing to take into account, so when you drive the car, the profile of your tire gets less and less throughout time. And this isn't just gone, this is transformed into small dust particles of rubber, which are just floating around everywhere. Imagine the amount of rubber particles around us. Now, you might feel pretty good about yourself driving an electric car. Drive as much as you can with zero emissions. Nothing. Zero emission. Zero pollutants in our environment. Imagine zero dependency on foreign oil. Sustainable mobility. 100% electric, 0% emission. But this simply isn't the case. You still leave a huge footprint. We just haven't got the infrastructure set up properly to manufacture and recycle cars. Here, wait, let me show you what that infrastructure looks like. As a start, resources like coal, oil, minerals, aluminum, iron and other metals are mined. Coal and oil are used to generate energy to power up everything. The oil is also used to create plastic. The other minerals and metal to create the additional materials. Plastic is used to make the interior, tires and the casing for the batteries in combination with minerals like lithium. And the rest of the material is needed to manufacture green energy plants, the entire framework of the car, parts, electronics, glass windows and wires. And these two are also needed to produce green energy. Okay, so finally we have an electric car and hopefully with renewable energy to power it up. Oh yeah, and everything that happens here is transported all over the world with machines that run mostly on oil. So as you can see, this infrastructure around cars is big. It runs heavily on fossil fuels, non-renewable energy and unrecycled materials. And this is basically the root of the problem. Most of us are not aware of this entire part. Because this is only the part we consumers experience. The change from filling it up with gasoline to clean electric energy. But in order to massively reduce a car's footprint, this entire part needs to change. And that's challenging. Mainly because this entire infrastructure is built upon a system of growth. The focus will always need to be here, on selling more cars. And car sales could actually be reduced, for instance in the future by smart autonomous sharing cars, or in the present by better public transport. But this and recycling and reducing footprints will always be the afterthought, because this line needs to go up, always. So in the coming decades, the focus will be on selling us more cars. Using clever advertisements that makes you feel good buying electric cars. In no longer taking from the earth, but accepting from the sun. Hell what, you might even buy an extra EV as a second car. Or drive more because you don't leave a footprint, right? And this will also increase commutes, taxi rides, food deliveries and packages being shipped. And as a bonus, they'll be hitting new markets like China and India to scale up production and sell the next billion cars. And companies absolutely love this, having people throwing money at something to save the environment. All right, so before you all got upset, I do believe in electric cars. I think it's a good technology for our future of transport. However, it also solves just a small part of the problem, just the tip of the iceberg. It simply is not gonna be enough. And in the end, we're not going to solve these problems by buying more cars. See, it simply takes much more energy and material to power up an electric car than just electricity you put in. And it's simply not possible for the entire world to live in the same abundance and use the same amount of resources as we currently do in the developed world. It's going to be a problem again in the future. Now, this video is just to show you guys electric cars might not be as perfect as you think. I don't have a solution, but we should work on this. In the long term, think about how we use transportation, rethinking the system that isn't built on growth and selling more cars. And in the short term, see what we can do on a daily basis. How can we change our habits that we use the car less? Because in the end, we can't just consume our way out of this.
All right, thanks for watching this video. If you have ID suggestions or want to help out, visit our forums in the community. And if you want to see more videos like this, visit storyhopper.com. Thanks for watching and see you later.